Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and More. Today's topic in oral surgery is inferior alveolar nerve block or IANB. So it is uh, a quadrant uh, dentistry nerve block. So it means it can be used for a third quadrant or fourth quadrant. The entire quadrant procedures can be done with the help of this single nerve block. So Buccal nerve block also sometimes will be given along with IANB only if uh, the soft tissue anesthesia in the buccal posterior region for that quadrant is necessary. And uh, the nerves which are anesthetized are inferior alveolar nerve, incisive nerve, mental nerve and lingual nerve. And as you see here the area anesthetized are mandibular teeth to the midline, body of the mandible, inferior portion of the ramus buccal mucoperiosteum mucous membrane anterior to the mandibula first molar that is through mental nerve then anterior two third of the tongue and floor of the oral cavity that is through lingual nerve again lingual soft tissues and periosteum again through the lingual nerve so what are the indications of ianb so the first thing is procedure on multiple mandibular teeth in one quadrant or when buccal soft tissue anesthesia that is anterior to the first molar is necessary or when lingual soft tissue anesthesia is necessary all these cases we can opt for IANB but the contraindications are infection the presence of infection or acute inflammation in the area of injection so that is very rare uh, but if infection is there uh, the effectiveness of LA the LA won't work properly so we won't get the desired anesthesia and it is contraindicated in patients who might be uh, biting either the lip or tongue they have the habit of this biting lip or tongue such as a very young child or physically or mentally handicapped adult or child because there will be a lingual uh, nerve block which is uh, giving anesthesia to uh, basically the tongue and and the lips also will be uh, anesthetized so they might be having a tendency to bite on it so once the anesthesia uh, effect is over uh, the chances of, of pain because they might have accidentally injured the tongue or lips because the anesthesia effect might be obscuring the actual pain so in such patients we should be very careful uh, we should not uh, uh, opt for INB uh, rather we can go for infiltration technique now uh, let's see the technique of INB okay so the first thing is 25 gauge long needle is recommended for the adult patient 25 gauge and area of insertion okay so as you see the picture it is a mucous membrane on the medial side of mandibular ramus at the intersection of two lines one horizontal line representing the height of injection and other vertical representing the anterior posterior plane of injection so that is the area of insertion one horizontal which is representing the height of injection and the vertical which is representing the anterior posterior plane of injection and the target area inferior alveolar nerve as it passes downward toward the mandibular foramen but before it enters into the foramen that is the target area next is the landmarks so as you see here the landmarks first one is coronoid notch that is the greatest concavity on the anterior border of ramus then the tergo mandibular raphe then the occlusal plane on the mandibular posterior teeth so these are the landmarks so the procedure so as you see the picture here for right uh, inferior alveolar nerve block a right-handed dentist should sit at 8 o'clock position facing the patient okay so right-handed person sit at 8 o'clock position for a left IANB a right-handed administer or dentist should sit at 10 o'clock position okay so for right IANB this is for right INB and this is for left INB. This is 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock. And the procedure 
first position of the patient that is supine mostly recommended or uh, semi supine position the mouth should be open wide to permit greater visibility and access to the injection site next is a procedure so there are three parameters that must be considered during the administration of ianb the first one is a height of injection okay and the second one is anterior posterior placement of the needle so which helps to locate a precise needle entry point and then the depth of penetration so that determines the location of the inferior alveolar nerve so these three parameters must be considered that is the height of injection anterior posterior placement and the depth of penetration so the first thing is height of injection as you see here in the picture we need to place the index finger or thumb of your left hand in the coronoid notch this is a coronoid notch here we need to keep anyway your right hand is having a loaded syringe so left hand the thumb should be placed at the coronoid notch an imaginary line extend posteriorly from the fingertip in the coronoid notch to the deepest part of terigo mandibular raphe okay so as it turns vertically upward towards the maxilla so terigo mandibular raphe is vertically upward towards the maxilla and which determines the height of injection so this imaginary line should be parallel with the occlusal plane of mandibular teeth so that is how we uh, find the height of injection we need to place the index finger at the coronoid notch and the there will be a imaginary line which extends posteriorly from the fingertip and the coronoid notch to the deepest part of terigo mandibular raphe so you can see the picture here the placement of the syringe barrel at the corner of the mouth usually corresponding to the premolars so the needle insertion point lies 3/4 of the anterior posterior distance from the coronoid notch back to the deepest part of terigo mandibular raphe so you can see the finger and the needle uh, insertion site okay so that needle insertion site lies 3/4 of the anterior posterior distance from the coronoid notch back to the deepest part of terigo mandibular raphe then we have the anterior posterior placement of needle so needle penetration uh, occurs at the intersection of two points okay that is the point 1 falls along the horizontal line okay horizontal line which is from the coronoid notch to the deepest part of terigo mandibular raphe as it ascends vertically towards the palate so here we have the terigo mandibular raphe and this is a coronoid notch okay so this is a horizontal line so that we should keep in mind then the point 2 point 2 is a vertical line through point 1 about 3/4 of the distance from the anterior border of the ramus so this vertical line which is crossing the horizontal line which is from the 3/4 of the distance from anterior border of ramus that determines the anterior posterior site of injection so the intersecting line will be the needle penetration point so it's not very easy to uh, draw in a two dimensional board so you can see the picture here where exactly the needle should be going on a horizontal and vertical line intersection and penetration depth the ultimate success of ianb will be done only when we get a bone resistance the needle should be touching the bone that is the medial side of ramus of the mandible So the average depth of penetration to bony contact will be around 20 to 25 mm approximately 2/3 to 3/4 of the length of the long dental needle so 2/3 or 3/4 of the dental needle will be inside the tissue then only we get the bone resistance suppose if bone is contacted too soon less than half the length of long dental needle the dental tip is usually located too anteriorly on ramus okay so if you are getting dental needle it enters to the tissues it reaches just one half 
and we get bond resistance we are in a very anterior position so then we should withdraw the needle slightly but do not remove it from the tissue bring the syringe barrel towards the front of the mouth over the canine or lateral incisor on the contralateral side then redirect the needle until a more appropriate depth of insertion is obtained so the needle tip is now located posteriorly to the mantula sulcus and what if the bone is not contacted okay then the needle tip is usually located too far posterior so in order to correct this withdraw it slightly in tissue that is leaving approximately one fourth its length in tissue and reposition the syringe barrel more posteriorly over the mandibular molars and continue the insertion until contact with bone is made at an appropriate depth of 20 to 25 millimeters so if it is too anterior and too posterior also will be problem if it is too anterior the bone resistance will be obtained early and if it is too posterior we will not get a bone resistance so we should correct it accordingly then the exact procedure is when bone is contacted withdraw approximately one millimeter to prevent superiosteal injection then aspirate if it is negative slowly deposit 1.5 ml of anesthetic over a minute of 60 seconds okay so 1.5 ml in one minute so slowly withdraw the syringe and when approximately half its length uh, which is remain within the tissue we need to re-aspirate if negative deposit a portion of the remaining solution that is around 0.1 ml to anesthetize the lingual nerve okay lingual nerve then after approximately 20 seconds return the patient to upright or semi upright position wait for three to five minutes before commencing the dental procedure so what are the signs and symptoms so along with this i forgot to tell you inb along with this lingual nerve uh, the long buccal nerve also will be given if soft tissue uh, procedure is indicated in that area so that is uh, more on a buccal side so we need to bring the needle towards the same side of the patient same side same quadrant and we need to give a long buccal nerve anesthesia so the sign so what are the signs and symptoms the subjective uh, sign is tingling or numbness of lower lip which indicate anesthesia of mental nerve which is a terminal branch of inferior alveolar nerve so that is a good indication uh, that the inferior alveolar nerve is anesthetized although not a reliable indicator then there will be numbness of tongue which indicates uh, anesthesia of lingual nerve and uh, objective uh, there will not be any pain during the uh, procedure so what are the precautions uh, should be taken while giving INB that is do not deposit local anesthetic if bone is not contacted because the needle tip might be resting on the parotid gland and by accidentally if we deposit solution on the parotid gland the nerve branch that is a facial nerve uh, is there and it might cause uh, facial paralysis temporary facial paralysis and avoid um, pain by not contacting bone too forcefully so our ultimate aim is to get a bone resistance but we should not cause pain by contacting bone too forcefully and now uh, let's see the problems associated with or the complication associated with INB so the most common complications involved in INB is facial nerve paralysis trismus and hematoma so we discussed how the transient facial nerve paralysis happening when the bone resistance is not obtained and our needle tip is at parotid gland level and we are depositing the solution so parotid gland has facial nerve branches so this solution will anesthetize facial nerve so the facial nerve involving the facial muscles will not work properly on one side it will create temporary facial nerve paralysis so the symptoms of this facial nerve paralysis is inability to close inability to 
क्लोज द लोअर आईलेट क्लोज लोअर आईलेट एंड ड्रॉपिंग ऑफ अपर लिप ऑन द अफेक्टेड साइड सो एस यू सी द पिक्चर हेयर सो इनबिलिटी टू क्लोज द लोअर आईलेट एंड ड्रॉपिंग ऑफ अपर लिप ऑन द अफेक्टेड साइड सो दैट इज फेशियल नर्व paralysis but it is a transient effect the patient will be okay after once the effect of uh, this uh, anesthesia is gone so second one is trismus that is a muscle soreness or limited movement so a slight degree of soreness when opening the mandible is very common associated with iamb and sometimes uh, more severe soreness uh, will be there if the injection technique is not proper then hematoma which is a swelling of tissues on the medial side of the mandibular ramus after deposition of the anesthetic solution so these are the most common complications associated with iamb facial nerve paralysis trismus and hematoma so that is all about uh, inferior alveolar nerve it is a very commonly asked question you need to draw the proper uh, diagram the insertion point and the boundaries the target area and the uh, pterygoid mandibular rafe the horizontal line and vertical line the intersection point how the needle should be inserted all this you need to draw and explain okay so hope you understood this uh, inferior alveolar nerve block technique so i'll come up with a new topic in oral surgery thank you